Good morning. Thank you for joining everybody. I'm Richard Kelly from Atomize, based here in Wellington, New Zealand, an elite uh, partner here in New Zealand. And uh, today we have a webinar that uh, Atomize is hosting along with uh, Avid to give you all an update on the broadcast and media solutions that uh, have been uh, updated over the time that we've all missed going to trade shows and uh, seeing the latest and greatest. So hopefully this gives you all a chance to catch up on the latest news. Today's uh, uh, presentation is, is uh, being presented by Craig Wilson, avid product evangelist and expert of all things newsroom. And uh, you've got a great opportunity to ask us questions throughout the uh, presentation, throughout the webinar. Andy Wilde from our Auckland office will be monitoring those and uh, will help feed those through. So don't be afraid to uh, use the Q&A function, ask your questions, we'll keep an eye on them and, uh, and answer them for you. Um, many of you will already know Craig. He's uh, certainly been a, a very key man in our region for uh, information on um, and workflows on Avid products. And uh, of course, has a, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, podcast, Making the Media. So if you want some extra information around the side of our, uh, of our industry and just want to see the latest and greatest, Craig's uh, webinar, is off, uh, sorry, podcast is obviously the, uh, the one to go to. So with that, I'd just like to um, welcome Craig to the webinar. Please um, stand by everybody and uh, enjoy the meeting. Thanks a lot, Richard, and uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Craig Wilson, as Richard said, and I'm the Global Product Evangelist for Media and Cloud at Avid. Uh, joining you today um, from Aberdeen in Scotland. Uh, it's been some time, of course, since we've all been able to travel, uh, but uh, great to have the opportunity to uh, to join you uh, this evening for me uh, and obviously at the, in the morning for, for everyone across in uh, in New Zealand and, uh, and other places, and hopefully there are people joining not just from, from there, but from other places as well. So what I'm going to take you through in the course of the next maybe 45 minutes or so um, really is an update um, on really some of the new product introductions that, uh, that we've had in Avid um, over the course of the last few months. We've got some things that have just come out in the last few weeks that, uh, that we'll take you through um, as well. Uh, and to give you a view of some of the things like story-centric workflows that, uh, that we now have, uh, integration with things like Adobe Premiere Pro uh, and um, IP-based ingest um, as well through a product called, uh, called Media Central Stream. Um, as Richard said at the start, please feel free to ask questions um, as we go. We'll um, have some time for, uh, for Q&A uh, at the end and, uh, and more than happy to, uh, to do that. Uh, but let me start by uh, sharing my screen and then we'll um, start off by just a couple of slides to, to maybe set the scene for um, where we are. So um, Richard, hopefully you can see my screen with the first slide on Media Central. Yes, Craig, that's all up. So hopefully everybody can see that. That's great. So, so Media Central um, is um, Avid's platform really for um, uh, sharing content, exchanging content between different, different um, users. It has workflow automation, orchestration, uh, asset management um, as, as part of it. Um, and really, since we all kind of got together before, um, you know, thinking back to maybe about a year ago, just, just now, we've actually had a number of different releases um, of Media Central and what's called Media Central Cloud UX, which is the, the user experience um, end um, of it. Um, and really what we've introduced through this period is some more what are classed as story-centric workflows. Now, story-centric workflows is a term really about newsrooms and how newsrooms work together. But Media Central Collaborate really can be used for any um, news operation or production where you're looking to do you know, some planning because it gives you the capability of doing planning. You can um, uh, track uh, and allocate tasks to, to people. You can also gather content together. So you could have a single place where I could see all of my video content, all of my stories from my newsroom system. I can see those tasks that have been created. And a really important thing um, for, for Avid is also been the introduction of some mobile apps. 
So we also have a mobile app for Media Central Collaborate. And that really allows you know, journalists, reporters who are working in the field to get mobile notifications so they can see, for example, new tasks that they've been allocated um, and they can also update the status. And I'll take you through and I'll show you that um, as well. And this is something that's a very big focus uh, for us um, in continuing to deliver. So we've had a couple of releases of Media Central Collaborate, the latest just coming out um, a couple of weeks ago. We've also done a lot of work around enhancing third party integrations. It's very important for us at Avid while we can, of course, deliver a complete end-to-end -end solution is one of the, 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 the big advantages, I believe, that we have. We also recognize as well that some of our customers, you know, they want to work not just with Avid products, but with other products um, as well. So we've introduced some new round-trip workflows with Adobe Premiere Pro. So what that allows is users who are editing using Adobe Premiere Pro can now get access to all of those assets that are part of the Media Central um, system. Uh, we can also create and manage um, Adobe projects uh, as part of what we have in Media Central um, Cloud UX um, as well. And we've also introduced a new um, OP Atom plugin, uh, which enables certain workflows as well. And we'll talk through that in a little bit more detail. Also, you know, extending out some of our uh, capabilities with um, other newsroom systems. So we now have integration with the EMPS, Octopus, and Open Media newsroom systems. And of course, addition to our Media Central newsroom management as well. And we also have integration now with Viz uh, for graphics as part of newsroom workflows um, as well. Other things that have also been added is enhancements around the editing capabilities in Media Central Cloud UX. You can now have up to four video tracks and eight audio tracks. I mentioned the work that we've done uh, to integrate Viz graphics, but of course we have Maestro, which is Avid's graphics platform, and that allows us to view, fill out templates, and also to, to burn in graphics as well with multiple layers. Lots and lots of enhancements around searching. You know, we recognize, particularly in large systems, how important it is to be able to, to search and to find things. So lots of enhancements there. And then some new additional features. So single sign-on. So you can uh, sign on using your Active Directory authentication and some enhanced localized language support. So beyond uh, just, uh, just English. So let's talk in a little bit more detail about Media Central Collaborate. And I am going to demonstrate this to you in a, in a little while. But Media Central Collaborate, as I mentioned before, is about story-centric workflows. So we recognize, of course, that while broadcast workflows and newsroom workflows through a studio are still fundamentally important um, for us, we recognize, of course, that customers need to deliver content not just for the show, but to multiple other destinations, whether that be through websites or through social media. And the way that Media Central Collaborate works is it provides this unified view now for planning and then for gathering content together because I can allocate tasks to people, I can create assignments, and then I have this container area that allows me to pull everything together. So we're not pushing and pulling media around. You know, we're not copying things from different places. Everything's really efficiently done, working in the same place and fully integrated into the Avid uh, suite of, of products. I mentioned before about the mobile app. We see the mobile app as being really fundamental to uh, workflows for journalists because clearly you want them to be on location as much as possible rather than necessarily being um, in, the, in the office. So we see the mobile app as really being a fundamental part of this um, as well. I mentioned the integration that we've done with um, Adobe Premiere Pro. And that really has sort of two different levels to it. So one is um, I can create templates and manage Adobe Premiere Pro projects. This enables me to actually go in and set out a template project with a defined folder structure, bin structure, even containing media that people could, could potentially use. And the other thing it also does, and you can see in the image here, is you now have a media central panel inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And that allows editors using Premiere Pro to search and browse for what they need. You can um, import master clips, subclips, and sequences into Adobe Premiere. So you could do, for example, a rough cut in Media Central Cloud UX and then pick that up and finish it in Adobe Premiere Pro um, as well. There is some enhanced metadata mapping tool. So I can map metadata from my production management or asset management systems into the Premiere Pro um, XMP um, 
uh, structure that you have um, as well. And you also have access to Media Central Collaborate here as well, because you can access that um, within the panel for, for Premiere Pro as well. In the latest release, the other thing that we've added is the ability now to check in Adobe Premiere Pro sequences to Media Central Production Management. So what that means is you could edit something in Premiere Pro, check that back in, and then an editor in Media Composer could then pick that up um, and finish it. There is also an option to flatten a clip and bring it back in um, as a master clip. And we've also introduced a new plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro to allow it to natively read Avid Opiatum Media. Uh, this principally is around long media, so things like XTCAM, for example, where Premiere Pro struggled to understand the structure uh, that it had. And so what we had to do in the past was do a sort of convert uh, workflow to transform that media into OP1A to allow Premiere Pro to edit with it. Now, everything can be done just by editing in place. You don't need to copy or move media. It's a much more efficient way of working. Now, clearly, we still believe Media Composer is the best editor. It's the best editor for delivering the workflows uh, that we think our customers need. But if you have got, you know, for example, in the digital department or perhaps in marketing department, people who are using at Premiere Pro, they can now take advantage of that shared media, shared storage env environment that Avid, of course, has really pioneered um, uh, over the years as well. And I'll also take you through a demonstration and show, me, show you the work that we've done with, uh, with Adobe Premiere Pro as well. And then the other one that I mentioned at the start there is what's called Media Central Stream. Now clearly, you know, a lot of ingest that's going on at the moment, you know, is coming in through the studio or it's coming in through satellite, but increasingly we're seeing more and more demand for IP-based ingest. And this really is what Media Central Stream um, is, is all about. Um, so it's a software only application, it runs in a, in a, in a VM. Um, and really what it does is it takes in some common formats. So they are SRT, RTMP, and we also have a live view um, integration as well. And on the fly, converts that into a media um, um, ready format for your end users to use. So whether I'm working in Media Composer or I'm working inside Media Central Cloud UX, when the media ends up uh, inside of my Media Central system, it's ready to go. I don't need to do any other conversion. That is what Media Central Stream um, is doing um, on, the, on the fly. And of course, the important thing about that is you may well change or add this in to how you're doing ingest for your system, but downstream, the workflow remains unaffected. So, you know, all of your you know, journalist editors who are working um, inside of Media Composer or Media Central Cloud UX can take advantage of and access all of this media without really having to, to, to change um, anything else. So that really summarizes the, the kind of ground that we're going to cover in the next, uh, the next little while. Um, and what I'll do just now is I'm just going to switch my screen across and take you into um, Media Central Stream. Now, I mentioned before that Media Central Stream is a software only application, and it also, it runs on a web browser. So this is running here for me on uh, Google Chrome. Uh, you see, I've got two tabs here. One is for Media Central Stream. The other one is for Media Central Cloud UX, because that obviously runs um, in a browser as well. I'll just make it full screen. So I've got a bit more screen um, real estate. But Media Central Stream has four channels. You can, of course, have multiples, but it has four channels uh, in a single um, uh, sort of installation. It has a number of different tabs at the top here that really are used for setting up and configuring the system. I'm not going to spend time on them uh, just now. I'm going to focus on what's called the remote console. This is the user end uh, of what users would, would do. Uh, so here at the right-hand side, you can see that I have um, some ingest templates. I also have routing templates and I have crash record settings. So these are really what you use to, to set the system up. So for example, for a routing template, if I go in and uh, open one here, this is where I can go in and I can actually define, for example, the protocol that this stream is going to use. In this case, it's SRT. I've got the host address here or the port number uh, that's being used. You may well have a passphrase that's being used uh, if something is being sent across uh, from some secure sites um, as well. So this is what you would use to set up your, your routes. And then the other one that we also then have is ingest templates. 
And ingest templates are where, for example, you can go in and predefine, in this case, I want to do an XDCAM 5025i recording for two minutes. This is the um, you know, codec, the raster size that we're going to, to use. This is the workspace destination that we're going to, to have here. I can set some uh, default file name here, for example, you know, date uh, uh, and time as part of it. And of course here, because I'm working in a media central system, I can also define that this is going to check in. It's going to be available as a growing file. And this is the folder that it's, uh, that it's going to go into as well. So you see here, we support XDCAM. It's not just XDCAM that we support. We also support um, some of the DNX uh, codecs um, here as well. So you can go in you know, as an administrator and you can set um, you know, these, these kind of things up. Now, one of the things that, of course, you know, we have with Media Central Stream is, and of course, with IP-based ingest, is it really opens up, you know, a whole range of different types of devices that support these kind of um, uh, streams as well. So, for example, here, I'm just going to go in and I can go into an individual channel and I can create a routing. So, in this case, I'm going to select this one, hit root. Um, and you can now see here, what I've actually got is this is actually something that's streaming out from my phone. So I've got a High Vision Play Pro app on my phone, uh, and I'm using that just to, to stream out uh, directly from my phone. And you saw how quickly it appeared. So when I hover your mouse over the screen at the right hand side, you'll see they get some information about the bandwidth that's being used, the number of audio channels, frames per second, you know, the scan height and things like that um, as well. Um, so let me just go across here and I'll just set up a, another recording. So again, same thing as before, go and create a routing. You can then come in here, you can choose your source, click on root, and within a few seconds, you can see it then appears. So I get a preview here of what's actually being, uh, being ingested at this particular point in time. Um, if I now go to do a recording, so on an individual channel, I'll simply go in, and again, I can choose one of the templates or I can manually uh, go in uh, and add this in, and then just click on record. And then within a few seconds, what you'll see is that I'll get some uh, on-screen display. There we go. And this then shows me, for example, time counting uh, up, time counting down, the duration of the recording, you know, the format that it's being converted to. As I mentioned before, this is being converted on the fly uh, in its way into uh, Media Central and um, Cloud UX. So that was doing, you know, what setting up a recording. The other option we have is a crash recording, which is this one here. So I could just press this button here, and that's going to automatically choose the crash record um, uh, template that's been set up and automatically go into record. So there we go. We're now recording. And just to show you this, if I now come out of Media Central Stream for a second and go into Media Central Cloud UX. Now I'm going to explain a bit more about Media Central Cloud UX in a, in a second, but all I need to do here is just refresh the folder. And then I can now see these two recordings coming in. They're taking the default name because I didn't choose to, to change that. That's the channel, the date and the time um, that the, the feed is, uh, is coming in. And then Media Central Cloud UX, of course, has got an integrated video player. Um, as part of it. So here I can see uh, the integrated video player I've got. And of course, if I double click on the recording that's coming in, this is now going to load um, inside of the, of the video player. Now I'm just gonna put my camera down um, and I'll actually stop streaming for the moment. And um, so I can focus on the other things that I'm doing. So of course, if I'd named the clip here, of course it would show the name. So when this now comes in, uh, this again is something that's new in this version of Media Central Cloud UX. It may be a little bit difficult to see um, over, over Zoom, but here I now see a green bar that shows me the duration um, of the feed that's, uh, that's coming in. At the right-hand side here, I get a kind of hashed area because the this is a feed that is still uh, coming in. But you know now it's coming in, I can so still I begin to go in and I can work with it. And it's, it's playing back for me here as well. Uh, and of course, I can now go in and I could work with this as if it was any other clip in the system. And I think that's a really important point, that that downstream workflow that, uh, that we mentioned um, earlier on um, is really unaffected by anything that we have going on. Now, Media Central Stream supports 
Um, H.264, and the latest version also supports H.265 uh, as a format for ingest. And as I mentioned, SRT files, uh, which we see as a very much a growing market, um, more and more devices are, um, and organizations are joining the SRT Alliance, uh, RTMP files, and as I mentioned also, we have workflows with LiveView as well. So what we have with LiveView is, um, LiveView of course, I think it's an LRT is the format that they have. Uh, we have a LiveView connector that basically converts that in, uh, and then we can work with those files and bring them in through Media Central um, stream um, as well. So let's talk a little bit now about Media Central Cloud UX and some of the different workflows that, uh, that we can have here. So in Media Central Cloud UX, it gives me access to a number of different things. So for example, down the left-hand side here, I can see my folders. I can see the different systems that I'm using. So for example, here, I'm looking at folders inside my Media Central production system. If I go into my media folder here, for example, I've got some protest footage. If I double click on it, it's going to load into the video player for me. And of course, I could begin, begin to, to use it. Um, you see below the video player, I have some different tabs here. So I have an audio tab. I have a metadata tab. This has added in, in the latest version, the ability to add things like categories as part of what you have in Media Central. You can also have custom metadata fields as well. There is also a storyboard view because you can do logging inside Media Central Cloud UX. Also gives you access to thumbnails. So I can then see thumbnails for every part of the feed, for example. And also with this panel here, I can choose to hide it. I can also choose to move it so I can use the screen real estate in a slightly different way. Uh, and I can put it across there or I can just get rid of it um, completely. So you've got quite a lot of flexibility around you know, where you want it to, to be. Also in terms of the video player um, itself, you can of course resize it. So you can make it you know, bigger or smaller. You also get the option here, again, it may be a little bit difficult to see on Zoom, but if I hover my mouse across the right-hand side, I can go into full screen playback. But I also have the option here where I could cast this. So you know, my setup here, I have a laptop and I have a separate screen. If I wanted to, I could cast this onto my laptop rather than looking at it on the, the stream um, itself. So quite a lot of flexibility for what you can do um, you know, here with the, with the video player. And of course, as I mentioned, Media Central Cloud UX also has editing capabilities. And we'll look at this um, in a little second. So on the one hand, I have access to all of my different systems. Now, as well as Media Central production, I also have access to my newsroom system. So here I can access and work with uh, stories and create stories and write stories inside my Media Central newsroom management system. Some of you will be familiar with this um, as, as iNews. But as well as browsing the different systems that I have, I can also search in the different uh, systems that, uh, that I have. And I could search on any of the different systems, whether it's my archive system, my production system. Uh, I can also work with local systems and remote systems because we also have capability of moving material between um, different, uh, different systems as well. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the various different apps here. A couple of apps that we are going to spend time on is looking at Media Central Collaborate, which we'll come to next, and also an app called Media Central Publisher. Maybe Media Central Publisher enables workflows where I can create and publish content to social media, to my website, for, for example, um, and it's fully integrated within the system. One of the big things about Media Central Cloud UX is about providing a toolbox that journalists can use to perform a whole variety of different tasks. And not just journalists, but you know, producers, researchers, anyone who's working um, you know, in, the, in that kind of environment to create content and then distribute content. It's really all about collaboration and people working you know, more and more um, closely, closely together. So I talked about collaboration there. So let me now take you through what's called Media Central Collaborate. So Media Central Collaborate, as I mentioned at the start, really is Avid's tool for story-centric workflows. And what we mean by that is providing a place where I can begin to see everything related to a particular story. 
whether that be a package that was done for the six o'clock news, uh, a post that's maybe been created for, for Twitter, uh, a script that ran um, in a particular show, even some graphics that have been used for a particular show as well. Now, in the past, in order to see all of that, those different types of things, you'd probably have to look inside each of the individual systems to do that, which wasn't particularly efficient. But now, really, what we're doing is enabling all of that within a single system. So what we're looking at at the moment in Media Central Collaborate is what we call the planner view. And the planner view allows um, you to work in a variety of different ways. Uh, you could, for example, here, as I've done, is you can create what are called topics. A topic is our highest level. Um, and these could be for days of the week. So here, I've done a little bit of planning for some days of the week. Or alternatively, you could have a topic for um, you know, a particular story or a particular genre. So we're pretty flexible about how you, you really maybe perhaps want to do this. Now, if I go into, for example, the topic we have here for tomorrow, inside that you can see I have these different things here. Well, what are these different things? These are assignments. So if you imagine I'm planning for tomorrow, and here I've got a variety of stories that we're going to cover, and these are the assignments. You'll see there's different colors here. That's because these colors relate to different stages that a story is at. So I can use these to begin to track all of the different things which are going on with a particular story. Now, for example, here, if I go into this protest um, assignment, I see some other things. So here at the right-hand side, I can now see tasks which have been created. So you can see here, there's a package for the 10 o'clock show. Here, there's a, a post to be done um, for, for Twitter. And here at the left-hand side, I can also do things like I can put in due dates and times, for example. I could also put in some information. So here I could type in some information about you know, a particular task um, or a particular topic. I can also add tags. These tags, of course, can be searchable. And I can also allocate team members um, to, uh, to this as well. And one of the other things that I mentioned earlier, of course, is also the fact that we have a mobile app for Media Central Collaborate as well. Um, and I'll show you that um, just, uh, just in, a few, in a few seconds. So at the one level, we have the ability to go in and view and create what are called topics, then further down assignments, and then further down from that, uh, we can then allocate tasks for people. So at the planning level, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into tomorrow's date. And what I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to create a new assignment, okay? So this is where I'm going to go and I'm going to plan something. So this could be a story that I'm going to cover um, or, you know, it could be um, another, you know, topic that, uh, that perhaps we want, to, we want to look at. So let's imagine that uh, we're going to do something um, about the holiday season. This is, you know, a big topic here in the UK, as I'm sure it is in, in other places, about people going on holiday. Can you go on holiday in the current regulations? And, you know, can you, can you travel? So here I'm going to go in and now I can add some tags. Now, as I type, you see, as I'm typing, it will offer me suggestions. So, yeah, vaccine is part of what people are talking about. But also, you know, they might talk about going on vacation. So I can now add this in as a new value um, for what we're doing here. So let me go ahead and I'm going to create that. So I've created that as a new um, assignment. I can now go into that assignment. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a task. So for this particular task, I want someone to film the airport. And I can put in a due date and time. So, you know, the date tomorrow is the 25th of the 5th, 2021. And let's say I want this done by 12 o'clock. Once I've done that, the person who's coming in to access this can download this as um, a reminder. They can put it in their calendar and they would get a link that would take them directly to this. But I can also add team members. Now you can see here, it's already offering me the team members that are allocated to other assignments as part of this topic. So saying, okay, you've got these other people here, but maybe I want to add another team member. And so when I go here, I could then search or simply filter. So say I want you know, Benjamin to cover this. I can just type in, it will filter, and it will show me everybody who's here. I can also add resources. So if I go to resources, for example, 
then you know perhaps I want them to use a particular camera kit. So I can add that here as well. And when I save that, you see here, it pops up again here at the right-hand side. It adds that information in. Now this time I'm going to add another task and this task is going to be a post for Twitter. I'm not going to bother with a due date and time for this because I want this to happen you know, as soon as, as soon as possible. But what I am going to do with this is I'm going to allocate this to me. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to show you the, no, the notifications that, uh, that we can get. So I've got a little bit of software that I'm going to bring up that's just going to mirror what I'm seeing on my, um, on my phone um, screen. So bear with me one second while I just do the screen mirroring part. And I'll pop this across here. Oops, sorry. So hopefully this will mirror my screen. There we go. Okay, so here on my phone, I have the Media Central Collaborate app. Um, and if I filter here to show only my stuff, for example, you can then see, I can now see the Tuesday, May 25th. So it's only showing me you know, what I'm allocated um, to. So what I'm gonna do just now is in here, I'm gonna come in and I'm adding myself to this particular task. Now, in reality, of course, this is a planner who's doing something and is allocating a member of staff. And I, of course, could be anywhere, you know, not necessarily in the office. You know, I could be, I could be just um, out, uh, out and about. Uh, but as soon as I do that, if I bring up my phone, you see I've now been allocated to a new task. So I get that notification, you know, immediately. And if I then go into my phone, I can now see the information page. I can see all of the different assignments. So, you know, there is the, the holiday season, uh, one that I've created there. And I can also see, if you look here, the little circle that what's blue around it, it's got me. So I know it's been allocated to me. And if I then go into that, I can also then see the task. So there is the task, which is the post for Twitter. And the other thing I can also do here is I can update the status of this. So here, for example, I'm gonna go in and say, okay, this is now in progress. And I can just select that from here as well. Now, using the mobile app, um, not only can I do that, but I can also go in and I can create topics and assignments as well. So again, you don't need to be in the office. You don't need to be, you know, using the Media Central Cloud UX web app, you know, to allow you to, uh, to, to do this. So as I mentioned before, you know, we really see the mobile app as being a really important part um, of, of really what we're, what we're looking to, to, to do here and to deliver. So now if I go in here to the post for Twitter, I can see it updates and it shows me that this is now in progress. So I think, you know, you have to kind of picture in your head the fact that the planner is doing some element of the work, but then, of course, you know, the journalist themselves is, is going off and, and doing stuff. Okay, so we've gone in, and if I go back to the planner view, just to kind of repeat what I mentioned there is, so I've gone in as a planner, I've created some stuff. I'm now coming in as the reporter. Now, as the reporter, I'm really only interested in my own stuff. So I can filter to just show me my stuff. I can also sort by any of these different columns. Um, there's also different columns that I can choose to, to display here um, as well. So there's quite a lot of flexibility that, uh, that I've got. So I'm going to go into you know, my one for tomorrow, just as we were looking at from before. And let's go into the holiday season one. And I can see I've got this post for Twitter to do. Now what I want to do is I want to begin to gather material together for this particular story. So in Media Central Cloud UX, I can combine apps together. So here, for example, I've now got my Browse app. And in my Browse app, I've got some footage that I want to use. I've got some nice Bulgaria aerials from you know, holiday that someone had in the past. So I can come in here and I can select individual items or multiple items. And I can drag and drop them into this area here, which is what's called the container. Now, we're not copying media here. This isn't pushing or pulling anything uh, to do that. They're simply adding links in here, you know, to go off and to allow me to, to begin to work. 
Now, we talked before as well in Media Central Cloud UX. The Media Central Cloud UX has also got some editing capability. So now what I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to create a sequence. So I'm set up the sequence. The sequence is called holiday. And let's do this for Twitter, for example. And that's now going to create a blank sequence for me. So now I've created my sequence. Now I mentioned before, I can have multiple video and audio tracks just for time. I'm just going to keep this you know, really simple just now, but you know, I could have you know, four video um, and eight audio tracks if I wanted to. Now let me just add that in here as well. So I've now gone in and I've created a sequence. Let me just save that sequence out. Well, of course I want to link this sequence to this particular assignment. So I can easily drag and drop you know, the sequence um, in here um, as well. Now bear in mind, again, I'm doing this as one person. You could have multiple different people working on different elements of this particular story. Okay, and adding different things in. So there, you know, I've gone in, I've added, you know, some media, I've added, you know, um, a sequence um, in here as well. But I could also, you know, bring my rundown app open. And here's, you know, my rundown that, uh, that I've got. Let me just hide the story form just to um, <clears throat> make things a little bit easier. So here, you know, I've got a particular running order that I've got. Inside the running order, of course, I can create a story. If I was writing this, so this is the holiday story, for example, and I can come in and you know, type in the text here. That I'm working on, so I could add you know, the, the story in here, and then I want to link the story to, uh, to what I'm doing. So you know, I could also do this as well. But this is a post for Twitter. So how am I going to do the post for Twitter? Well, again, inside Media Central Cloud UX, I can open up what's called Media Central Publisher. So again, I'm doing all of this and I'm not stepping in and out of different applications. I'm doing it all in one place. And so for Media Central Publisher, I can take my sequence. I can simply drag and drop it to here. And what this is now going to do is it's now going to open up the Media Central Publisher interface and this is where I could now go in and do things like add branding. I could add pre-rolls and post-rolls. I can add static images. I can add animated graphics. Um, I could even do things like closed captioning. I can do vertical video, square video as well. The quickest way to do things from here is to just go and set up a template. In this template, I can define my pre-roll and post-roll. Station branding could be commercials. It's also automatically going to add some graphics. It's also going to dictate what I'm publishing to and in which format. I can change this, of course. I can also have mandatory metadata fields. So this is the holiday story. And then the message here is this is the story for the holiday. And you'll see at the bottom here, I have save, save and exit, and I have published. Let me just hit publish. I have to have permissions to do this, of course. You know, It's not something that's a free for all for everyone. And what this is now going to do is this is actually working with a cloud hosted service. So this is now sending an HLS stream into the cloud to then render out those graphics that have been added, add on that pre-roll and post-roll. So we're not using something like, you know, Telestream Vantage or anything like that to do it. It's all been done, you know, through a cloud hosted, uh, cloud hosted service. So we'll just let that carry on as well. So there we've looked at ingest with Media Central Stream. And then we've looked at Media Central Cloud UX and our ability to not just view video, but also edit video, work with Media Central Collaborate, whether it's mobile or whether it's in the web app itself to create content, gather content and bring it all together. And then use Media Central Publisher to then publish content out as well. But the other thing, of course, we also wanted to show you, and I'm, I'm conscious of time, is our workflows with Adobe Premiere Pro. So in Adobe Premiere Pro, what we have added is the Media Central panel for Adobe Premiere Pro, which you can see here. So in that Media Central panel for Adobe Premiere Pro, I have access to the Browse app. I also have access to the Search app. So, you know, I can search against any of the content. I also have access, as you see here, to Media Central Collaborate, where I could go in and I could access any of the assignments um, or the topics that have been added um, as well. But if I just go back into my um, Media Central Cloud UX uh, window here, 
then this Adobe Premiere Pro client is working on Nexus shared storage. You know, Nexus is very much this a fundamental part um, of what we do in lots of workflows uh, with uh, with Avid and with Media Central. So this is working on you know the same shared storage that the rest of our clients um, will be working on. And so inside the the Media Central Cloud UX panel, if I have some footage here. Um, if I double click on it, I can get a, a preview of it inside of the panel. So I can come in and I can review, you know, what it is that is actually contained uh, in the, the feed itself. And then if I want to use this, I can simply right click and I can choose here this option to import to Adobe Premiere Pro. And what this is going to do is import the media in to Adobe Premiere Pro. The media file itself is staying on the Nexus. I mentioned at the start that we have this plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro to allow it to read and understand uh, the, 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 the OP Atom structures that we have inside of the, the, the Avid world. And so, you know, again, I'm not copying media. I'm not pushing or pulling anything around. This just gives me access to it. In the bin, of course, I can hover scrub it. But again, if I double click on it, I can load it into the video player. And now, of course, I can work with it and I can edit with it, you know, really as if it was if it was anything else. And then the other workflow that we've also added is the ability to take a sequence. So here you can see I have a, a sequence in, in, in Premiere Pro. And I can check that back into my Media Central production system. So here, for example, if I just go into the users folder, just to make sure I don't put it somewhere I'm not supposed to, I can select a folder, I can right click, and I can choose here to check in the selected sequences. And what this is going to do is check that sequence and it's going to generate an AF and then take that sequence and check that into the Media Central Production Management System in the folder that I have selected. So an editor coming in and using Media Composer, for example, could then pick this up and then could continue to work with it because it will check it in as a sequence with the layers uh, which are which are attached to it, and I think in the the I know there's a, a another call that's happening tomorrow. Uh, I think the guys in the call there will probably go over uh, a bit more um, of what we have uh, with our workflows with Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, again, as something I said earlier on, you know, we very much still believe that Media Composer is the best editor, and of course, in Media Composer, you have access to all of the content um, inside Media Central as well. But really, this is expanding out. It's confirming what we've said for a long time about the openness of an Avid system to be able to work not just with Avid tools, uh, but also with tools from, uh, from third parties as well. So I've been talking for, for quite a long time. Uh, I think I'm going to grab um, a, glass of, a glass of water. Um, and, and Richard, um, I don't know if there's been any questions that have come in um, or anything else that you want to, uh, to pick up on. And we can have a little bit of a, of a Q&A session. Thank you very much, Craig. It's uh, great to have this uh, very detailed um, run through the latest and greatest from Avid on the Broadcast Solution. As Craig mentioned, uh, tomorrow we are also hosting a post-production specific uh, presentation. So please feel free to join us for that. And uh, we'll be going into um, an overview of the, the editing products themselves. Um, Andy, do we have any questions that uh, we're gonna have, uh, you'd like answered? from uh, our uh, members of the webinar. Hi there, Richard. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of questions I've seen that have kind of come through, not through this chat window, but uh, through uh, other social platforms as well. But um, there's no more questions, I suppose, here. The first one I've seen is, you know, can the Media Central Cloud UX system with older Interplay versions, or do I need to be on the latest version? Um, to get all of the functionality, um, you need to be on a, a, a relatively recent version. Um, Media Central Cloud UX itself is relatively forgiving in terms of uh, in terms of versions that uh, that you need. There is a matrix that is in it's on the Avid knowledge base, uh, and that will then show you the supported versions for each of the different Media Central Cloud UX um, versions that you that you have and associated you know Media Composer. Um, uh, versions as well. Uh, in terms of Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, it's I know we've tested on Premiere Pro 2020 and, and 2021, um, but you don't need to be on the the real latest, you know, Media Central Production Management version, for example. Um, but there will be a matrix that uh, that's there and will have just been updated um, as we had the release just a, a few weeks ago, Andy, of the of the latest version of Media Central Cloud UX. Okay, thank you. So the answer to that is I don't know off the top of my head but I know the information is there on the knowledge base. 
Yeah, so, so from my experience as well, exactly as Craig is saying there, fundamentally there, there is a, a matrix that we would use to kind of make sure we have functionality. The last, so obviously the, the important thing to remember here, there's also been a, a naming convention change. We've moved away from the interplay name to the media central uh, production environment. It's, it's a naming terminology. Functionality is, is enhanced over the old interplay versions. So um, things like interplay 2017, uh, was kind of the last interplay naming, really 3.8, I suppose. Uh, and there, there are some touch points, but as Craig also said before, to get the full enhanced feature set, you obviously kind of need to move the underlying uh, uh, production uh, servers forwards to leverage new functionality as well. Uh, there's another question here as well, Craig, based around the uh, Media Central streaming function here. Uh, and that is, uh, can the Media Central streaming function does it need to be on a vm platform or can it be on-prem on a physical platform uh, you you meant you alluded to the fact it's software only but can it be uh, hosted on-prem or or in or even in the cloud so yeah so it's it's software only um so um it, it's obviously runs on a vm so that vm could be could be hosted locally um or it could be or it could be hosted in the cloud um the system i'm actually running and, and testing just now is actually running entirely in the cloud um, so everything I was doing there was, was running in the cloud. Now we're in the process um, at the moment of you know, testing and qualifying a whole variety of, of, different, of different workflows that we have. So Media Central Stream itself does not need to be running in the cloud. This could be something that's you know, on a VM um, in, your, in your facility, as you know, all of the different um, aspects of, of Media Central can be. Again, as Andy, as you and I know, we've worked together for a long time, so we've gone through what was you know the traditional was a sort of bare metal installation where everything was on a physical server and sat in in the server room. The vast majority of work that we do now is is um, is running through VMs. I think that's just a standard practice these days. Um, and we are in the process of going through a, a sort of qualification exercise um, of looking at you know moving obviously to the to to the cloud. Um, how that works, whether we have hybrid workflows or purely cloud workflows, there's a whole variety of things that are going on just now. Um, but for Media Central Stream, it does not have to be cloud hosted. It could just run in a VM in your facility. Perfect. Uh, and, uh, Andrew has sent me, uh, another Andrew, Andrew Chow, uh, has sent a question which is quite good. It said, is there a calendar view of all assignments within MC Collaborate for those teams working on multiple longer term projects? So at this point, the answer to that is no. Um, it's very much on our feature roadmap uh, to, to be delivered. But the, the planner view that I showed you at the moment um, is the, the, the view that we have uh, today, but, but very much on the, uh, on the roadmap to, uh, to have. Uh, another simple question. Well, not, not a simple question. It's never a simple question, Andy. It's not, actually, it's quite a simple question. It's kind of a yes, no. Uh, does Media Central Cloud UX re remove the need for the NRCS tool in Media Composer? So the answer to that is no. Um, at the moment, the uh, the NRCS tool um, in Media Composer um, can, can still be used. Um, the workflow would be slightly different. Um, obviously, uh, for people who don't know, the NRCS tool in Media Composer uh, stands for Newsroom Computer System. What it gives you, if I was to go into my Media Central Newsroom Management Story or in Cloud UX, as I just did, uh, and created a story and added a video ID to that, then the NRCS tool allows you in Media Composer to then create a bin and a sequence with that video ID on automatically added. So that functionality still exists. The workflow would be slightly different, but exactly what I did there when I went in and I created that story, created a video ID, I can then link the story and the sequence together. That will then create a blank sequence with the story name and the video ID that it's been given. So in Media Composer, rather than using the NRCS tool, you could just go in and use the Media Central Cloud UX panel to find that sequence, drag that into a bin, you'd have to create the bin, uh, and then you would go on and you would continue to work. So the workflow is slightly different, um, but the NRCS tool is still supported, but you could work um, uh, in that way. And I suppose the advantage really for that, for the majority of people is that that means that that sequence can be worked on before it even hits a, a craft suite as it were. So that, that okay. whole editorial workflow is kind of, can be front loaded rather than back loaded into the edit suites, which is-, is Yeah, that's exactly right, Andy. And, and again, I've, I've worked with one specific customer that has two different departments that work slightly differently. They have one department where the journalists go in and do a rough cut 
Um, and then the editors actually, they copy that into a clean sequence. They use the NRCS tool and they copy it into a clean sequence. Their other department, um, their uh, producers and researchers, they create the rough cut based on the story that they have inside their newsroom management system. And then the editors pick up and re-edit that story. So it flows all the way through. And of course, you know, inside Media Central Production Management, you can then track all of those different version changes. So all the way from, you know, the very first edit made by the journalist, all the way through to the last edit made by the editor is something that's trackable inside of, of production, production management. I think with, with many of these things, it, these are all workflow conversations to be had around what's the most appropriate workflow to have. And I see that, that other customer, they're the same customer, but they have two different departments that work in, in two different ways. So I've kind of got a question as well for you, I suppose, just kind of to round the whole thing out a little bit, I suppose. And um, one was, to, obviously, we, we see that this is the first uh, story-centric, or well, true story-centric functionality that is coming out from the um, uh, Media Central news platform. And obviously, that is something that we're, is obviously expected to continue, as you alluded to, being able to have, you know, calendar views in the application. Um, do, do you kind of, will we see, you know, that, that, Newsroom functionality is exposed now with Adobe and things like that. And the fact that we've now got this plugin that allows us to use OP Atom content inside uh, a, a, a premiere. Is, is this the, the, the homogenous system we see where, you know, it is quite common for certain departments to work on Adobe, certain departments to work on maybe in, in Media Composer. Is, is this kind of the sea change, do you think? Is this a kind of a watershed mark for for how things are moving forward in the industry overall? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's important to recognize that, you know, newsroom workflows are absolutely fundamental to what we do. And, you know, we've done newsroom workflows for, for a very long time, and we continue to, to do newsroom workflows. And by that, I mean, traditional newsroom, studio, you know, play out as, as we've, always, we've always done. But there's a bigger recognition now that that's now one element of what you need for a newsroom system. So when we talk about a newsroom system, in the past, that focus was entirely on iNews, Media Central Newsroom Management. But really now when we think about it, it's a much bigger piece. That's one element, really important element, but I need to deliver to social. I need to deliver to my website. I need to produce content perhaps for a VOD platform. I need to do all of these things. And I want to have some control and capability about managing all of that from one place and providing visibility in one place to all the different things that are going on. So, I mean, I appreciate in, in the 40 odd minutes that we had, we go through things pretty quickly, but you could easily have a scenario where, you know, an editor's working in, um, in Premiere Pro, accesses content from, you know, that Collaborate container, checks it back in to, to Media Central, someone else in Composer picks it up, then continues to, to, to work with it. Um, or, you know, from, from Premiere, checks back in, gets published out to, to, uh, to, to through Media Central Publisher, out to social media, and Collaborate is providing that one location where I can then go in, you know, this is a good example, you know, here it's in the UK, it's, you know, it's coming up for 11 o'clock at night, you know, perhaps I'm working on something for the morning show. But then at 9 a.m. in the morning, when, you know, Andy, you, you come in to do your shift, then you get said, okay, this story continues on. You know, in the past, you'd have to go and look in your newsroom system for all the scripts. You'd have to then go and look in your production system to find any of the video, which could be in a variety of different folders. You know, someone's put something in one bin, someone else has put something else. We've brought something in through the Media Central Capture system, for example. And it was quite tricky to find all of these different things. Whereas now you could come in, you could look, for example, at, you know, today's, um, particular, you know, topics and assignments. And in there, you can then see all of the information that relates to a particular um, story as well. So we'd absolutely see the, the Media Central Collaborate app and story-centric workflows are a huge focus for us. And that will continue, um, you know, um, over the course of uh, the rest of this year, I'm sure into next year and, and, uh, and beyond. And, you know, we mentioned about the calendar view being on the roadmap. There's a whole variety of other things that we uh, intend to add um, to the capabilities of Media Central Collaborate 
you know, you know, I think the mobile app is, you know, has got lots of capability on it. We want to do more um, with uh, with it, and we want to add additional functionality, particularly around around planning, um, you know, tracking of things which are, are being published, um, and adding that kind of functionality in as part of an integrated system. You know, not something where I've bolted something on and to do stuff while well, I need to push it here and maybe copy it there and move it around. You know, integrated as part of one bigger system and again available whether you're using composer um, or you're using premiere pro awesome thank you okay i think we've pretty much done just double check no i think we're all done with our questions which is hopefully answer most of them but um we'll be handing it back to you richard i think after that thank you very much andy and craig um craig thank you very much for for staying up late in your night and and uh and putting a pleasure, this together for us um thank you also to shauna in the background who's who's uh, been uh, making the uh the back end of the webinar work um if you've got any questions that have come up from this please feel free to get in touch uh we'll be linking a recording of the presentation uh, on our website uh, and again, tomorrow we have a post-production focused product, uh, webinar. Uh, again, we'll be joining Craig and uh, Andy to run through and um, uh, uh, Ray from Avid on uh, the latest and greatest on the post-production side. So please feel free to register for that and join us tomorrow. And once again, if you've got any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.